Just listen to what he has to say. The other principle of a nutritarian diet, which I didn't mention yet, the fourth principle, is called CNA. CNA, Comprehensive Nutrient Adequacy. That means nutrient density is not enough. You also need to fill every peg in the hole. You have to make sure you're not missing any nutrient that humans need. Oh, that is brilliant, Doctor. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. Today, we will gain insights from Dr. Joel Foreman, a respected family physician and nutrition expert, has dedicated his career to researching and promoting a diet rich in plant-based, nutrient-dense foods. His approach, which he calls the nutritarian eating style, has garnered significant attention in health circles. In this video, we'll delve into Dr. Foreman's insights on brain health and aging. We'll explore the factors that contribute to brain shrinkage over time and discuss dietary strategies that may help maintain brain volume and function. Additionally, we'll examine key nutrients and supplements that could support cognitive health. Dr. Foreman's evidence-based recommendations offer a fresh perspective on using nutrition to potentially slow or prevent age-related brain changes. Providing valuable information for those seeking to maintain mental sharpness as they age. While this diet is designed to provide optimal nutrition from whole foods, there are some nutrients that may require supplementation to ensure you're meeting all your body's needs. Today, we'll explore these potential nutritional gaps and discuss how to address them safely and effectively. Whether you're new to the nutritarian lifestyle or a longtime follower, this information will help you fine-tune your approach to achieve optimal health. Let's dive in and explore the world of supplemental nutrients for nutritarians. A doctor would know. A doctor always knows. You could eat plenty of kale and strawberries and you know, raw onion. You're eating plenty of healthy food. But what if you're deficient in B12 or vitamin D or DHA or zinc? Because those foods aren't high in those nutrients. We have to make sure that you have everything you need, even if you are in a diet with an otherwise nutrient density. And oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. What's one of these nutrients that we need? One of these nutrients that humans need may be DHA for the brain as we age. Let me discuss this briefly. Because if you're going to follow a nutritarian diet and live to be 95 to 100 years, if you're going to live, you know, really a long time, then what about aging of the brain as you live that long? Then we've got to protect the brain because the studies show that low levels of DHA are associated with brain shrinkage with el in the elderly. That means the levels, we're showing that lower levels can be, show the hippocampus where, they, where memory is and judgment can shrink. The brain shrinks more and the levels of DHA is, is low. And, and the question is, do vegans who are not de supplementing with DHA, have, do they have a risk of getting DHA deficiency? Or people on near vegan diets or even on a nutritarian diet, am I, are I sure that all people are going to have adequate amount of DHA to sustain them if they live to 85, 95, or 100 years old? Dr. Foreman will reveal the answer as to whether the subjects of the test had sufficient EPA and DHA. What's the answer? And the answer is that we did a study on 166 vegans who were not supplementing with EPA and DHA and found that 64% had insufficient levels and 27% were significantly deficient. And that we looked at their levels of flaxseed or flaxseed oil or walnuts that they were eating, the, the, whether they had a source of ALA in their diet. And we found that those that were so significantly deficient did not correlate well with whether they were eating walnuts or other sources of ALA. Because when the people that were deficient, it, it speaks to the fact that it was more genetically determined by conversion enzyme differences from person to person, not based on what they were eating. So it is, it is potentially risky for some people who have a higher requirement for EPA to DHA to not to eat any source of that, like fish. But the fish is polluted, and the commercial fish is even more polluted, with 14 times the dioxin of, you know, of wild fish. Like you go to the restaurant and you say, oh well, I ate healthy all week, I'm gonna eat something in a restaurant. I'll eat the burger or the meat. Well, it looks, oh, they have some salmon there. I might as well have the salmon. But you don't even realize that the salmon's probably the most toxic thing you could eat in the whole restaurant. It's not wild salmon, that's commercial salmon. That's been, that's been farm raised and that has 14 times the dioxin of, of regular of fish, even 10 times the dioxin of, of commercially raised beef. 
Well, the point I'm making here is that EPA DHA is important for brain and memory as you age. It's linked to depression in women, and it's potentially possible for people to be dangerously low for their future in EPA and DHA, but a little bit, a little bit is protective. In other words, in the study that I just um, demonstrated, showed you, that we gave people just 200 milligrams a day and to normalize the levels in almost every single case. Where is the source of DHA and what is the dose? You don't, if you want to take a source of, like a vegan source of EPA and DHA, you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit, a tiny bit. Because your body preferentially will hold on to that it needs and save that and not burn it for calories, not burn it for energy. It'll put it to its storage where it needs and it'll burn other fats for energy. So you don't have to take a huge amount. It's not the EHA, it's not the omega-3, omega-6 balance in your diet. It's to burn off those extra omega-6s and fats you don't need to allow the body to save and to retain the omega-3 it does need. It's to supply sufficient amount of omega-3 while you don't put excess fat on your body. That's how you maintain the omega-3, omega-6 balance in your tissues. It's the omega-6, omega-3 balance in your body's tissues that's important, not the omega-3, omega-6 balance in your diet. Did you follow that? If you don't have a lot of fat on your body and consume adequate DHA, you were shaking your head no. I was speaking too fast and you didn't follow that. I'll go over it again. Will you repeat that, please? Isn't it about the balance between omega-3 south and omega-6 south for good health? Some people think that your diet has to have this favorable ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 for good health. And I'm saying that that's not that important. What's important is that the omega-3 to omega-6 balance in your body's tissues and cell membranes, that's important. And to get the, the favorable balance in your own body's tissues, you, as you lose weight and as you attain a normal body fat mass, then you will not have a lot of omega-6 stores in your tissues, and your body will utilize the omega-3 it takes in in the right places to balance out its own tissues, and your tissues will have a favorable body store of omega-3 omega index on them. I don't, have to worry, I don't have to not eat any cashews or pecans because the omega-6, omega-3 ratio is unfavorable because I'm burning those for energy because I'm relatively slim because I exercise and I eat right and I meet my omega-3 needs. So my tissue stores of omega-3, omega-6 balance are favorable even though my diet may not have a favorable omega-3, omega-6 balance every single day. Did you follow that better? Now I understand. Are there different types of omega-3 south and omega-6 south? Well, there are two types of omega-3 and omega-6, and I, I was explaining that I want you to have both sources. In other words, I want you to have these nuts and seeds I was talking about, the walnuts, the hemp seeds, the flax seeds, the chia seeds. You see it says ALA under that? That stands for alpha linolenic acid. That's the amount you to have that every day. That's the best source, but I am saying that that's not sufficient for many people. They also need a source of EPA and DHA because a lot of people don't convert that into EPA and DHA sufficiently. And what's the best source for that? Well, probably a vegan EPA and DHA supplement because it's more less chance of pollute, having pollutants and rancidity. I'm, I make one that has um, that we keep refrigerated in glass so we keep it very fresh. So, Yes, so because a lot of the ones you buy in a store are too old, they're on the shelf life, and they're not refrigerated, and they have more rancidity. But fish oil can be highly rancid. Could be, you know, could be fish that was killed years ago and not kept refrigerated. You know. Do you recommend a particular type of omega three? All right. So I think I'm, I, I think you have you guys are understanding that point. So this is that question, which whether I which type of omega three I'm recommending. I'm probably recommending algae grown omega-3 made right here in Florida. They have a, a monopoly. All the, all the algae omega-3 in, in the country is made here, right here in a company in Florida. And um, a small amount will do, a, a very small amount is sufficient. You don't need to overdose on this stuff if you're eating a healthy diet. Can you go back? So I'm saying here that a small amount, 100 to 300 of DHA and 50 to 100 of EPA, maybe a, you know, 100 to 200, you don't have to take a lot of this stuff. Plus, everybody should be having at least a tablespoon of chia or flax seeds a day, or hemp a day for ALA. And you get other protective ligands in the process. Any other recommendations? Go back! I can't go back. I've got to finish this up now. <laughs> so my recommendations means you take sufficient B12. Some people may require more zinc. If you're not eating seaweed or seafood, or you may eat a little kelp or a little iodine in your diet, and your vitamin D needs is proportional to your sunshine or your color of your, of your, the color of your skin, which may increase your need for vitamin D. You have to make sure you're taking vitamin D to meet your needs. 
You know, so sometimes diet can't be enough. These are supplements. What? What kind of supplements? From Daily Bugle Supplements. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments. Your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.